Active Session History, or ASH, is fantastic, but make sure you know how to diagnose the data. Otherwise, you might end up with a catastrophe. Here's the question that came in. We capture active session history data for our AWR reports. Anyone that's licensed for AWR knows that ASH and AWR are pretty much the go-to when it comes to tuning your database and finding performance problems. It's just a fantastic facility. However, we often see erroneous sample times in our ASH snapshots. For example, an AWR report for snapshots between 9 and 10 a.m., 10 a.m. and 11 a.m., we will see sample times that don't fall in that time frame. What's going on? In this case, the person said, sometimes even hours or days before. Is this a bug? Is this a problem? It's not a bug. And I can generous, I'll, I'll try to be generous here. It's not a bug in our code here at Oracle. It could possibly be a bug in your code. And let me explain what I mean by a bug in your code. The way Ash works, or the, the concept of grabbing snapshots in Ash works, is active session history, as you probably know, gathers samples every single second of what's going on in your system. The term active session means every session that's currently active, either on CPU or waiting, essentially in the middle of some sort of call, is grabbed every single second. When it comes to taking an AWR snapshot, say every hour, every 15 minutes, etc., one of the things we grab is what's floating around in ASH at the time. So if our snapshot is to scan this period between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m., you would expect it's going to pick up activity only between 10 and 11. And in the main, that's what happens. If I have a number of SQL statements that commenced between after, nine, after 10 o'clock and finished before 11, I've sort of pictorially described them there. There's four that have come, you know, finished, started and gone. They'll all be collected in the snapshot assuming they ran for one second or more, or just happened to get lucky and they were caught in those one second samples when we do ash. However, if something started hours ago or days ago, but it finishes inside that snapshot range, we will also capture that as well. That information also will be grabbed inside the snapshot. And this is a good thing because the information we get at the end when a SQL finish has a SQL statement has finally finished, we normally augment the ash active session history information with additional data because we know that it's finally finished. We can actually update some of the instrumentation or the details inside ash that occur once the statement is finished. So it's important to pick up that information because it was not present earlier. We can actually demo that we're going to try try do it with a couple of sessions and see if we can show that in action. Okay, so this says when we press enter, we're going to start running a long SQL, get session two ready. Okay, so we start this one running, it's 21.27.43, and now we take a snapshot. And that one started at 21.27.47. Now we wait for session one to finish. So this session has already been running in SQL, and then we took a snapshot here, the SQL will finish and then we'll take a final snapshot. So it was running before we took the first snapshot and we'll finish between them. So there we go. We took a snapshot while it was running and now we actually have effectively a final snapshot. Let's have a look at the interval time for this last snapshot. It started at 9.27.47 and finished at 9.28.13. However, when I actually go look at what's actually in there, I see some sample times that are before the actual beginning of the snapshot. This sample time is 92743, which is before I even took that snapshot. That's just a simple proof of the slide I gave you. This SQL statement here commenced before either of those that first snapshot, but even so it commenced before, because it finished inside the snapshot range, it was picked up by those details. Back to the slides, SQL statement, is already running when we take a snapshot. When we take a second snapshot, anything that finished between the two snapshots will actually be captured in that snapshot. So you'll see sample times well before that of the snapshot time. As I said before, this is a good thing. The final information that we have inside an active session history for a running SQL ID 
is actually aug augmented. We have things like total time weighted, et cetera. It's useful information to have. If you want a really good set of slides on active session history, that link there in the bottom, which you'll see when this becomes a YouTube video, John Bereznovich, one of the architects of ASH, uh, he's back at Oracle and he's published some of his slides. This one's from 2014, but still a fantastic piece of content on how ASH works. In particular, the bullet point I wanted to stress there is if you're using ASH, please be aware that ASH is about counting, not summing. What do I mean by that? One of the things that I see everywhere when people are showing me, you know, ask Tom questions or ask me performance tuning questions about ASH is they say, I summed up the time weighted column because we all know that the weight interface is very, very important. I summed up the time weighted column or I took the average of the time weighted column. You can't do that. Active session history is about sampling of rows every single session. It's not the data inside the row that really matters that much. It's the number of rows. If you have 10 rows for a SQL statement, it means it was running for 10 seconds. I'll caveat that with the column called the SQL exec ID, but that's for another office hour session perhaps. In fact, we should do a whole office hour session on ASH if we can. But be aware that just looking at the columns in isolation, it's not similar to other metrics. We're actually looking at the number of rows. That's the critical numbers that matters here. The count of rows, not the data inside each row. In particular, if you look at the time weighted column, it typically will be zero for most rows and the final row will have a total time weighted. And because of that, it's not something you can take the average of, etc. You'll get nonsense results. Always think about counting rows when it comes to ASH to get the idea of how long things are running for, because each row is a second in terms of elapsed time.